we chose to focus on the question of how is identity influenced by nature. And we looked at the Mesoamerican cultures of the Maya and the Aztecs and the Incas. And so we talked about how um, there's lots of natural things that we value and there's lots of things that the, um, the Mesoamericans valued. Well, we were trying to learn about how nature influenced most cultures such as the Inca, the Mayans, the Aztecs. And uh, so we were trying to experience what that was like. We looked at how these individual cultures were affected by nature and, and how their identity kind of was influenced by that and then we asked the students to look at their own personal identity and how nature influences them. It relates to me uh, because my identity is influenced by nature. Not necessarily the natural world but my environment around me like freeways and cars and environmental issues like pollution and global warming. For me what was important is to think about how the arts, particularly the visual arts, can be used to um, to teach or to think about something in a deeper way as opposed to just you know writing um, you know an essay or something where you, there's there's more kind of like hard evidence that they've learned something and this you know this is a way of thinking about it and coming at it from a different direction. Well during the project we went to the Natural History Museum and we looked at artifacts that there were there so that we would have an idea of what we were looking at and it sort of gave us an idea of what we were going to be doing. They really helped us understand um, the project in a hands-on kind of way. So we did an exercise where we all had a certain amount of Mayan money, so we had goods and everything, and we had to trade and barter and everything. I was lucky, I just traded for corn and food, but there were some people who wanted all the jade and all the valuables, and the end they said anyone who had like less than three or like five things of food is probably gonna die. So I was kind of one of the lucky ones. When we went to the Natural History Museum, we saw we went to this exhibit and we saw um, sculptures that the Mayans had. And we learned about um, daily life of the societies, and we looked at different artifacts that represented the four aspects: um, family life, class structure, agriculture, and religion. Sometimes, you know, the students go on a field trip and they kind of keep that experience in a in a bubble. And, and they put that bubble over there as that's the field trip bubble. That's the, you know, that doesn't happen in the classroom. That's over there. And what I love about this project is that the museum has been such an incredible focus. We also learned about the open chest figurine, which it was a really tiny little, it was a little tiny man, I guess. And he had an open chest and inside there were these symbols. And when we were walking through the visible vault, the gallery interpreter was telling us how it tells a lot of different stories. Nobody's really sure what it what it says, but that it's believed to kind of showcase that if the chest plate covers the soul or, or the in interior of the body, it can also be removed to expose it. And even if that wasn't the intention of the original artist back in the, the Aztec Empire, that was something that we were really drawn to. Well, we're doing collages that are going to be like our souls. We went outside and we took pictures of natural images and we um, chose our favorite and then we're going to put um, simple images and symbols. But then they took little symbols that represents them like their family, origin, um, favorite things to do, what they like, stuff like that. The collage is probably my favorite. I had fun trying to find, look for symbols that represent me. We kind of did a tie-in to history and English, so we're writing a poem in English um, to talk about our soul, and we're doing a collage in history as well for symbols that mean a lot to us. And with the help of the English teacher, um, Katherine Gibson, she um, supported this by giving them an avenue to practice their poetry, and so not only were they exploring their identity through through uh, image and symbolism, but they were also um, asked to communicate it through the written word in poetry. And um, th those have been going on simultaneously. So as we've been creating the collage, she's been working on them on the poetry and they've influenced each other. In the poems, uh, like we got a little bit 
from like history, like we would start it with like keywords, then we'd go someone to English and just like make it like bigger and see what um, all the words can mean to us. And we wrote a poem about our soul, and I re I really enjoyed it because it's allowed me to go deeper into writing and. Um, deeper finding out what I really like and dislike. We're listing things that are important to us, like words and symbols and everything, and then we're gonna try to put it together using, you know, devices of sound and everything. We have been talking about how we reveal our soul through words, and um, we've been talking about imagery and metaphor and symbolism, and, um, again doing some more reflective writing on that to produce a poem that will describe their soul and hopefully communicate their understanding of where their soul connects with nature. That piece of the project stemmed from just that one little artifact and then we, we knew we wanted to do some sort of grand mural and it was um, it wasn't until we actually were in front of the kids that I think it cemented for both Libby and myself what we wanted that mural to be and, and what the kids wanted it to be. So it was nice to be a complete composite from their perspective and from our perspective. And we both just kind of let our expectations go to the wayside and let the kids create. And I think they blew our expectations out of the water. We first started out just looking at some other murals, seeing how they were made. We figured out murals were actually a way how people express themselves just in art on buildings, walls, anything really. The students essentially are painting um, a mural of Mexico City and then everything underneath it. Ours is the underground of Mexico City. It's kind of like the history because the other class is Mexico City in the present. So ours is kind of like the, it's kind of like a flashback. In our mural we have painted a picture of um, a city, supposedly Mexico City, and below that is um, maybe a field or an archaeology site. In, in a very sort of poetic way, they painted these different layers, which is both literal and figurative. So it's like literally Mexico City is built on that site, on top of it, but then in sort of a metaphorical way, thinking about like each layer is representing time changing. We were trying to portray um, um, Mexico City, modern day Mexico City, because we were trying to, because that used to be Tenochtitlan, and it was really cool um, to see comparison, because the other class was doing um, the ruins and how it relates to it. So I think when it's all put together, then it'll look really, really cool to see what it looks like and then all the um, artifacts. I made sort of the general outline sketch of the mural and it's it's done in two parts. So um, the top half is for one class and the bottom half is for the other, the other class. And so I made this outline sketch and then um, from there, I created a grid system on top of it. So there, it's, it's a grid and then each student got a section of that grid. So I had this basic outline and then each student was sort of assigned this grid and then that student had to fill in the details essentially. We each got a section of um, a pre-drawn city and we were asked to color it and add in details um, to make it our own. And then the next morning, we passed a minute and then all of them just came together and it was so weird because some of them were like one color and the others were like another color and half of buildings were different colors and stuff. So just like the surprise of how much it blended together. Once we gave it to Miss Tolnai, once we gave her a little piece to our teacher, then it was no longer ours, it was everybody's. When the mural started to take shape and we started to see the collaborative process happen, the children had to be okay with letting go of their vision and trusting it to another child to finish. And so from there, once we had our image, then it got projected onto a canvas and the students would trace, traced all the different lines and then they painted it in. And that's pretty much it. When we're painting, it's really cool to see how everybody combined it because there are so many different colors and so many different things um, that it was really interesting. So it was really exciting to work on it together because each of us brought a different kind of artistry to it and it was really interesting to see the different kinds of colors that people brought. We traced it, painted it, 
it showed, t it really took teamwork also. It was more fun actually collaborating to paint, uh, more than just painting by itself because um, other people have different techniques and different ideas and it makes it a lot more fun. Middle school children tend to be egocentric um, in, in great ways, but they tend to be very um, me focused. And so both Libby and I wanted to um, give them an opportunity to collaborate. Collaborating was um, in a way difficult, but it was a lot of fun because it was something new. Um, most of us, we don't really work in groups all the time and group dynamics changed everything. It depended on who was your partner, um, who was helping you paint, who was um, drawing, because people, they all have different um, personalities and styles. I was most surprised on how well we worked together <laughs> because a lot of our, the people in our class are headstrong and, and some of them keep to themselves and a lot of people say, no, it's wrong, it's right, whatever. So I thought it was very interesting how all, all of us work together so well because normally we don't get along. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. For me, um, one of the more surprising parts of this project was just how well the students worked together. There definitely were students who were extremely possessive of their section, but for the most part, they kind of like seamlessly, one, one student would design or drew the details of one section, a different student traced that from the projection, another student painted it over, another student came back and cleaned up the lines and did all the details. And to have maybe that many hands, you know, four or five or six hands painting one part of it, um, and to see how open they were about that was really, it, it surprised me. I mean, I think of 12 year olds as being really narcissistic and being really possessive and being really catty, but they're not, you know, and that was really, you know, really great. I think commanders get a bad rep, you know, and <laughs> they're actually really wonderful. So, I mean, that that's really, that was great. I mean, this bunch in particular is a really great group of kids, so. I learned how a mural can, especially can, um, tell a whole story in just a few simple, really straight to the point um, symbols. I take away the experience of actually painting a mural, which is really cool. Um, and I take away my experience from the museum um, because I pet a snake. And it was just really fun because we did the activity with our partners and stuff. Like, I learned that a little thing can uh, have a huge impact. My really favorite part was just the basic idea of how all the pictures came together and then like made one big picture and it looked like it was naturally done. It was really cool. Uh, we learned about murals and um, that they can, uh, it doesn't matter what language you speak, it can always speak to you. I'll remember this class history, this year history, because I never remember everything in history but I'll remember this one because there will be something that I can take back and look at and remember about what I did in seventh grade. The give and the take of it between the kids and the support and the camaraderie and teamwork that came out of it, um, well, I hope for it, I didn't expect it, and, and I was so surprised that it came together as well as it did. And that um, I really see a, a support system and a network in that classroom that I don't think was there before. And I see certain students that weren't as creative, feeling more confident in their creative abilities. So it was um, all good.